Non-Monogamy Help is a podcast where your questions about open, non-monogamous or polyamorous relationships are answered. Our host, Lola Phoenix, will consult a licensed therapist with over a decade of experience to address your problems. Names and locations have been changed or censored to keep your questions anonymous. You're listening to Non-Monogamy Help, the podcast. Hello and welcome to episode 102 of the Non-Monogamy Help podcast. I'm Lola Phoenix. Please send your questions to nonmonogamyhelp at gmail.com and they'll either be read in the podcast or the column anonymously. If you want to read the columns and listen to the podcast, you can find everything at nonmonogamyhelp.com. Subscribe to the email newsletter by going to go.nonmonogamyhelp.com forward slash email and follow me on Twitter and Instagram at nonmonogamyhelp. If you want to support the columns on the podcast, I would really appreciate it. You can do that by becoming a patron and even $1 a month helps support everything, all the things I do. And it's just, it's just a nice thing. You can do that by going to patreon.com forward slash Lola Phoenix. If you donate $5 or more, your name with your permission will be read at the end of the podcast. All right, let's get to this week's discussion question. If this is the first episode you're listening to every week before I read the letter, I put forth a discussion question you can use with your friends, partners, or anyone else to get to know them a little bit more. I also answer it myself briefly to give you a little bit of context. This week's discussion question is... Are you a person who feels that there are clear boundaries between lovers and friends? I think this is something that is really good to discuss because there's a lot of things going around on the internet sometimes that's like, break down the boundaries between your friends and your lovers and kiss your friends. And like, it's not that I disagree with that, but I do think that it is very important to understand how your partners view their friends and their loved ones and and or lovers rather and for me there is very clear distinctions between them I know when I feel romantic towards somebody and when I don't and I just don't feel the need necessarily to do every intimate thing that I would do with a lover with a friend it's not as if I don't care about my friends I care about my friends greatly I I do love my friends But for me, there's just a little bit of a difference there. And that's fine. That's just how I associate with things. And if it's not how you associate with things, that's also fine. So it's also good to have that discussion just so that there's no confusion about things. And because it's also okay if there is not a clear, like even platonic line between your friends and your lovers. Maybe you do sleep with your friends and it doesn't make them necessarily your lovers it's always very interesting to see like how people define different things and that was one of the things in my last relationship that was super interesting for me because some of the people that my partner was with I would call them lovers but my partner was like no no they're friends and I was like okay you know and it's it's just very different to see how you and your partners envision those lines and whether or not they're the same or different so yeah worth discussing let's repeat that discussion question Are you a person who feels there are clear boundaries between lovers and friends? Let's get to this week's letter. A bit of a backstory, I'm in an odd situation with my boyfriend. He was polyamorous when we met, and even though I didn't have any interest in seeing other people, I thought the alone time offered by someone who is seeing other people seemed appealing. Plus, I have some serious trust issues after a previous relationship, and believing someone won't do something they want to do because I prefer it that way is impossible for me now. Thus, having a relationship where my partner is free to pursue whatever connections he really wants really appeals to me. I still don't have any interest in seeing other people, and he really likes that, so together we've determined the relationship will be closed on my end. Even though it seems imbalanced, we're both usually very happy with the way things are. The issue. There's a food place near me that I've really been wanting to visit, but the portion sizes are way too big for one person. I don't have any local friends or family, so I've been trying to meet someone purely to go to this place and share some food with me. A completely platonic food outing. I'm only intending it to be a one-time thing. I have a hard time maintaining friendships because I just can't seem to find anyone who actually wants to keep things platonic. And I'm just not interested in anything more than a friendship. Anyway, I met someone who is willing to go for food with me and he is clearly interested in more, but I'm fine with putting up with a little unwanted flirting if I can have dinner company for a night. The problem is my partner hasn't seemed all that attracted to me since I told him. We've talked about it. He says he's jealous, but he's fine with me doing whatever I want. But what he's doing doesn't match up with what he's saying. He insists that he's fine and that he still wants to do sexual things, but I can ask and have him go, yes, definitely, I want to do that, but make no move to stop whatever other activity he he has his attention on at the moment. 
I've waited hours for him to finish an activity while he verbally expresses enthusiastic interest in having sex with me the entire time. The whole situation is incredibly confusing, and it only started after I expressed interest in going out for food with this person. He has absolutely no issue with his other serious partners having non-platonic interactions with people, and he's even said it makes him happy when someone he's seeing has a new interest, or is happy with another partner, etc. Plus, he's never had any issues with me spending time with friends before. I understand it's different since this person probably wants more than just platonic interaction, but I've been very clear with everyone involved that I'm not interested in that. Even if I were interested, it doesn't make sense for him to have issues with things only when I do them. I've even scheduled it for a night when he is going to have non-platonic company, so he's not going to be at home missing me with nothing to do. Honestly, I've just got no idea what to do about this situation. I'm sure it'll resolve itself once I finish my one-time meeting, but I don't want this to happen every time I see someone who has a crush on me. Plus, I don't like the idea of him being sad on his own or losing interest in me because of something I can avoid doing. I don't really know what to do about this. Should I do something about this? Am I being a bad partner if I just follow my instincts and let him figure himself out? I would really appreciate your insight. Before we get to this week's answer, I'm going to quickly plug this episode sponsor, BetterHelp. I generally encourage people to go to therapy because I think it's a good idea, even if you don't think that your life is bad enough or whatever, blah, blah, blah. I do think that it's a good idea to see a therapist at least once. Why not? What do you have to lose? Especially if you're dealing with issues around polyamory. And for a lot of people, polyamory is not something that they feel like they can talk with their therapist about. Or maybe their therapist thinks that being polyamory is a problem. BetterHelp allows you to find therapists that you can talk to online, send messages to at any time of the day. And they do offer some financial aid. You can get 10% off your first month by using the promo code non-monogamy help or going to betterhelp.com forward slash non-monogamy help. Let's get to this week's answer. I don't really understand why it is that you decided to have a closed relationship. That really confuses me. And the, and the fact that you're, you said that your partner is happy that your relationship is closed makes me kind of curious about why that is. And I feel like you've not really explored why it is that this is the case. Because it kind of makes me wonder if there is some type of like cuckolding fetish thing that's going on here with your partner. He has all of these other relationships that are open, but with you it's like special because it's closed and you can't date anybody else. And that's fine, like it's fine to have that. But I just feel like it, there's like a discussion that needs to happen about that. And that needs to be clear because I feel like this, like that sounds like what's happened. That sounds like he has a kind of cuck holding sort of thing. Not cuck holding. It's not the right word. I don't, it sounds like he is interested in this situation primarily because you're not with anybody else. And even the idea that someone else could be interested in you or there could be something that could happen it makes him lose interest. So there need, you need to discuss this a little bit more. I also think like it's, I wasn't really clear on what it was that you had trust issues around, but I feel like there's a, there's a lack of trust. So like being polyamorous isn't going to get rid of your trust issues. And you seem to have trust issues, not only in your relationships, but also in your friendships. I'm really curious as to why it is that you... I understand you want to go out to this restaurant, right? I don't know why you don't just get takeaway or ask for a smaller portion size or just, I'm pretty sure that if a restaurant knows that you want to come there, but you want to come there alone and you're like, their portion size is too big. Can you make something smaller for me? Or can you put it in a box and take it home? I don't know why that isn't the solution to this problem, but it, it, it really confuses me why it is that you are so distrusting of this person that you're you're going to see. Like, you're sure they have a crush on you. You're absolutely sure they have a crush on you. You're sure they won't listen to you. And I just, I wonder if, if you commonly begin relationships with such a lack of trust in the other person. Is, is the ability to maintain friendships and, and your lack of ability to do so partially because you have such a, a sure idea of what's going on in somebody else's head and you have such a lack of trust in, in, in their willingness to listen to you. And yeah, I just, I don't understand why it is that you are so sure that this person has a crush on you. And you're so sure that they won't listen to you. And you're so sure that they expect more. Especially when 
have you talked about it? Have you addressed it? You, you kind of don't really address the big elephants in the room. You just go with your gut instinct about things. If, if I had a situation with a partner who, you know, and I was like, do you want to, you know, do something sexual? And they were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I would just outright be like, well, you're not. You're still doing this thing. It's been two hours. I'm waiting. If you don't want to do anything, then you should just like, I would, I would find it difficult to not point out the obvious. And equally, if I was going on a food date with someone and I felt like they had a crush on me, I would have, I would have a hard time not being like, so you know this is just platonic, and I feel like you have a crush on me. And understandably, I can't be held completely responsible if, if another person decides that they're going out on this food outing with me, and they think it's going to lead somewhere, and I've told them overtly that it's not, and, and they still have those thoughts, and then they get disappointed. That's not my fault. But, like, have you, have you pointed this out overtly? And what's being said, I don't know, you, you can't avoid him losing interest if he if his reasons for being interested in, in the relationship is that it's closed. And you also can't help but if he refuses to communicate with you, if you overtly say, like, dude, I you're saying you're interested, but you're not finishing, you know, watching Netflix or whatever it is you're doing. You're not, you know, you're not making any moves, my dude. So what's what's the haps? What's the deal? Like, what what's going on? If he refuses to communicate with you, then you can't really do anything. But I think that there's a combination here of both your lack of trust in people in general, but also a lack of communication about like, why is your relationship closed? Why? It's okay if you're not interested in dating other people, but why specifically close it? Does he have a kind of fetish? And, and if he does, that's fine again, but it needs to be discussed. So there's a lot of things going on here with trust. And I think that if you just have some honest discussions about why it is this is happening, that might help. Also, just go to the restaurant yourself and just get a takeaway back. I, if maybe you're English, like I know like in America, like takeaway is very common. So our portion sizes are often very large in America. So it's quite normal to go to a restaurant, and take some food home. In England, it's a little bit like, ew, gross, but whatever. Just take, take some home or just ask them not to make you so much food. Just... I don't understand why you need to have someone go with you or ask a family member or if you really feel like a person is crushing on you and that makes you uncomfortable, then just say no and go on meetup.com and find like a foodie group and be like, hey, I want someone who will find an asexual group. <laughs> like there's so many things you can do. You don't have to do any of this. So but I do think regardless of what you decide to do in this situation that he's got some hangups about, clearly there needs to be a discussion here about like why your relationship is closed, why that makes him happy, because that's really strange to me, and what the deal is. Like you just need to ask what the deal is. You just need to talk to each other. And also you might want to see a therapist and talk a little bit more about your trust issues. Don't use polyamory as a way to solve your trust issues. Because it's, you need trust in polyamory too. And even if your partner, I guess like maybe you have a hard time believing people when they tell you that they're only interested in being with you. And that is not an issue that's going to disappear just because you're in a polyamorous relationship. If you have problems believing people when they tell you something, then that will just carry over in some other way into polyamory. And it may be that based off of the interpretation you've given me of your partner's behavior, that he actually doesn't have a problem and maybe you're over-interpreting certain things. I don't really know. But if you have a problem believing genuinely that someone is either interested in you or is doing what they want to do, then that is something that needs to be addressed. You can't just address it by not addressing it, if that makes sense. So I hope that helps and good luck. Thank you for listening to episode 102 of Non-Monogamy Help. If you want to be awesome, you can donate to the Patreon. That is such a huge thing for me. Every time I get a new patron, it's it's just really nice. It's just like, yeah, I support what you do. And I know that not everybody else can, but I really appreciate that you, some of you do that. And if you donate $5 or more a month, your it means that your name with your permission will be read at the end of the podcast. This week's current patrons are Laura Boylan, Chris Albury Jones, Duke Ellen Robinson, Nikki Jones, James Wartell, Leo Yaki, and Tyler Tigno. 
And if for whatever reason you can't become a patron, as I said, I understand not everybody has the extra cash. What you can do is uh, take five minutes, log into iTunes or Spotify, find the podcast, rate and review it. That would be really helpful. That helps me get the podcast out there to new people. And it's just nice to see. If you do leave me a review, please feel free to send me it, either email, on social media, all that. I don't get alerts all the time when people do reviews on Amazon, uh, or not on Amazon, sorry, on um, iTunes. I only get reviews for certain countries that I've set up with some weird app, but like, yeah, please let me know if you've done a review. I really would appreciate it. And that's all for this week. And you can get a new column. You will get a new column next Friday and another podcast episode in a fortnight. Thank you again for listening. You've been listening to Non-Monogamy Help. Our podcast music has been provided by Chris Albury Jones at albury-jones.com. And the art was made by Dom Yung at d-o-m-d-u-o-n-g.com. Thank you for listening.